back to the MSG podcast. Um, episode four, five, and six of My Hero Academia. Should start off with episode four. You know, four comes before five, six. It's a logical um, starting point. I think. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the so what what I have written down here is are some of the main events that that unfolded in this episode. So, um, the episode starts off with the UA entrance, uh, practical exam. The, uh, applicants are fighting robots for points. And, um, and yeah, so, uh, Midoriya is, like, having some troubles because... He sucked. Right, right. Yeah, because he doesn't have a cork and, and, uh, All Might, no, no more than, than three hours ago, gave, gave, um, him his, uh, power. And it may not have kicked in at this point, and, uh, he's just sort of winging yeah uh can, can i talk around. real quick about like how that first robot is like only worth one point and it's like a giant robot no that one was worth zero zero point i thought i said it was worth one point mm-hmm. yeah because i don't know like w- like why it was worth zero but i guess the students were meant to avoid it and not front it but um right yes yeah, so that one was worth zero and uh the uh, girl the girl that saved him in a previous episode um from from falling uh she got caught under some under some rubble and then that's when the zero point giant robot um came in and midoriya you know lung uh flung into action and using his uh his his cork for the first time jumping up and punching it what did you think about that because last week you were like I, yeah, I didn't believe it. Um, clearly, he still needs some work, <laughs> considering he basically just broke his whole body doing that one punch. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, I imagine that that's like really, like really, really painful, just jumping up and breaking your leg and then punching and <laughs> breaking your arm and then <laughs> and then falling and then getting slapped. <laughs> but luckily, luckily, uh, Recovery Girl was there to um, kiss him and then heal him up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was good. But unfortunately, since he didn't score any points he went home sulking and uh you know he's really down but his mom gives him a, a letter um from ua and then midoriya ends up watching it and um apparently there's a thing called rescue point so um he's given some some of those allowing him to to be able to attend ua his, his dream work yeah. that's how teamwork work and that's about it for episode four that's it for episode yeah one. yeah pretty straightforward yeah any and thoughts uh one? i was mainly just mad about those robots i feel like i was gonna fight a robot i'd at least want it to be worth something well like most of them were like there were some like smaller ones that were worth points but my question is not i mean as you'll see watching these episodes but like not everyone has a court uh that would suit combat with right with robots but yeah because um yeah like some of the ones that i showed you earlier might not be suited for battle like the st- like the sticky ball guy or the I frog girl throw some sticky balls at people and then you know, I guess like like stick them, maybe stop them from moving. Yeah. Hmm, okay. But there's but but there's still like tons that that like aren't that are so, pretty much useless. Then how do they get into this academy then? Like, what do you mean? Well, if their quirks are like almost pointless. Like the tape guy. Tape guy. That is a silly quirk. Well, he's like Spider Man, but from his elbows. Like it's a strong tape. You guys can't see it, but I'm rolling my eyes. I just, I can't, I can't get into it. Tape, tape isn't even that strong. It's like, what's well, that? Well, it's, slightly it's, adhesive. It's like, like duct tape or something. It should be called slightly adhesive. Okay. <laughs> slightly adhesive, man. Yes. Okay. Right. Well, episode five. Shall we roll into episode five then? Let's do it. All right. So the rundown for this one is, uh, so we learned that one in every three hundred um, people that apply for UA attend it. So it's like a really prestigious school that uh, only the best can attend. Which you know leads to um, which leads to more questions because not well I guess like most quirks really are useless because you know as as we'll see that some of the UA students have subpar abilities. Yeah, like I'm always wondering like how do they even get into that school? You mm. know, like I was looking at some of the students that um, Midoriya like went to school with before he decided to go. Yeah, like Long Fingers guy. Yeah, <laughs> like I feel like Long Fingers guy might have a better of a chance than some of the other kids. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, but. 
that he only has like we're probably gonna like grab something <laughs> two feet away just creep people out <laughs> just like touch them like <laughs> stop touching me with your fingers long fingers guy well i bet it's really easy to like s scratch your back like you know like really hard to reach areas that's a pretty strong superpower but like his mom has like telekinesis midoriya's dad has like fire abilities like why didn't they go to uad mm, we, well that's another thing to consider like you know there are still jobs that need to be filled like like uh like accountant um uh like mail man or something so i guess you know not everyone can be a hero so maybe they thought well it's my abilities really aren't all that so let me um use my abilities uh, where i'll be more useful or something okay okay so then like are villains in this world are they like people with quirks gone bad basically well have you heard the the phrase um power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely yeah i imagine same same case like you know people i guess people like bakugo with the with his explosions like ever since he was a kid people were telling him that he's so amazing so great so like so, something like that could go to someone's head and they want to use that for for to exploit evil reasons yeah. okay i guess i'm just trying to understand that. also so um right so this is his first day day of school in this new, new episode Cause path of <laughs> um he yes yeah, so we are introduced to some more characters and there's and we meet his homeroom teacher aizawa mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who has a whose hero name is is something that that you admire very much eraser head yes there's a movie by david lynn called eraser head there's no similarities between this character and that movie yeah. but they've got the same name yeah i don't recommend watching that uh, <laughs> It, it's just a very like downer movie it's black and white so that automatically makes it like 10 times sadder and and it's um it's got like a funny face woman that that sing and, and like a deformed baby it's like, no 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 thing is fine <laughs> in heaven well, okay, so Eraserhead and his character in this series has the ability to temporarily, I don't know if it's permanently or not, but at least temporarily erase someone's quirk with his vision right uh and that's like why why his eyes are kind of like that because he has to because because um he erases their quirk for as long as his eyes are open so mm. when he blinks they get their powers back yes um pretty useful pretty useful ability yeah because you know all might is basically like the superman of this universe so all he has to, so all he has to do is look at him and mess him up yeah i mean that kind of kind of gives me an idea about like why he's a teacher at this university and and maybe he's like there to help control the students you know like he kind of seems like a bad guy in a little bit of this episode but i think it's almost like a snape kind of mm. person mm. where he comes off very gloom you will do what i tell you to do and nothing else and basically just doesn't want midoriya to succeed all of a sudden well but that, yeah but, go ahead go ahead but well i think it that his um his uh like criteria for passing is is pretty reasonable because midoriya does have like a, a quirk that renders him pretty much useless after one attack so you know then he's just a sitting duck and and a liability to his team if he has a team so it, it's um i think think he is looking out for him okay okay yeah. yeah see that's what i'm saying like he's a snape-esque kind of person because snape in the harry potter and books kind of comes off as like a bit of an enemy a little bit but then in the long run he's all about teamwork and love and this and that you just show it but um with his quirk his teacher's quirk i mean it kind of gives a little bit of a safety note to some of the some of the classes he teaches right because like if any of the students get out of hand guess what your quirk's yes. gone yeah definitely it's um i don't know if we said this last time but it's kind of like uh x-men a bit yeah I don't think we did. Right. So, you know, the, the students are still figuring out, figuring out their powers. So a t so someone with, with one with his ability could um, sort of, uh, like, his power sort of serves as, like, training wheels. Mm -hmm. So so they don't, like, hurt themselves or hurt someone else too badly. Right. Yeah. So that that's, that's kind of why I get why he's a teacher there mainly. 
And so we start off with uh, some tests. Like there's a uh, there's a series of tests, and the person that that uh, that gets the the fewest um, points uh, has to go home. That that's that's uh, that's the ultimatum for that Aizawa pro- proposes. They've been voted off the island. Right. And some and the tests were we have uh, the 50 meter dash. We have the grip strength. We have uh, standing long jump. We have the seated toe touch. We have the repeat repeated side steps um we have the distance run and we have the throw throwing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um some of these seem pretty like <laughs> ridiculous like nothing kneeling toe touch right and uh, hand gripping <laughs> <laughs> That's not even an Olympic sport. But come on. I'm sure that finger guy will be really great at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and toe touch. Jeez, he's killing it. Because if he can do the seated toe touch and the... Yeah, like he basically <laughs> has it in the bag. Throwing, he can like, like go... Launch it. <laughs> like his hand is a net, launches it. Okay, maybe that cork is more useful than we thought. <laughs> but you're right. So um, Bakugo is up first uh, in, in, in throwing, in the throwing. And he throws it 705.2 meters. Pretty long distance. Yeah. Um, do you know how long, how many, how long, how far that is in feet? Let's find out. Google. 2,312. Pretty good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's freaking long. That's like almost half a mile. Wow. And so, right, so we have some, we were introduced to some of the characters. We have Aoyama, which which uh, was the first character on that little quiz with the naval laser. Yeah. Yeah, he was funny. And we have Ida with the with the engines with like the little things on his leg. He was cool. Like yeah. The, He's like the, and like I like his internal monologue he has throughout this, uh, uh, these couple episodes because he's like he's kind of on me Midoriya's side a little bit he just doesn't come out and say it yeah because d- during like the last episode um when Midoriya knocked out the zero point robot he had this inner monologue saying oh maybe you know since we're heroes we're supposed to help people and he helped someone and he thought that he did something wrong so <clears throat> Uh, so I think after that, um, uh, Ida sort of has more respect for Midoriya now. After right. That. He's kind of like the Ron Weasley, uh, Midoriya's Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the Hermione would be, uh, Uraraka, the, the girl with the, the zero gravity quirk. Yeah. I'm still trying to understand her quirk. I mean, I get it. Like, she can make anything go zero gravity, mm-hmm. but like, that seemed kind of useless. Well, I mean, I imagine like something like that would be great for moving in and out of places like, uh, like if you have to move to a new apartment or something it'd be really great like right maybe. yeah but then like in a battle i mean most you can do is you can, like, like you can like touch someone and like throw them, throw them up and then just send them to the space yeah. so that i mean why don't you just do that with every like villain that comes into yeah. your like domain just send them send them to space yeah. do the like rocket you know like the team, team rocket, rocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and right so right so um midoriya is up to throw the, the ball and aizawa stops him he stops him because he's like hey you can't like break your arms every time that you use your power um so he gives him a second chance and he throws it like he uses only his finger it's like launch it (laughs) And that sort of goes to show you, like, just using his one finger, he was able to launch it just as far as uh, Bakugo. Um, a little bit farther. Yeah, like, like 0.1 meters more. But, mm-hmm. yeah, so you can all, only imagine, like, a full arm, what and full arm can do. he's just got baby powers right now, too. Right, yeah. So, um, that's... Right, yeah, so we learn... Yes, yeah, so that's it for episode five, yeah. Right, pretty much it. Um, we have one more episode, episode six. Um, right, so, so Bakugo thinks that Midoriya was, like, lying about his quirk. After seeing him throw it, uh, just as far as he did, actually, a little bit more, he thought that he's been lied to all of, all of these years to, like, be weak. So Bakugo is kind of pissed at him at this point. He's not even his friend anymore. Mm. Like, come on, Bakugo, get over your dang self. You ain't got no right to speak up at that point. And, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, what, so I guess Bakugo must, must feel, like, threatened a bit, I guess, because... Oh, yeah. Cause he, cause he's heard like people like Ida and 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 pe- and people like that. What he did to the Zero robot and this throw here. So so he's like, oh man, uh, I may actually have some competition. competition. If, yeah, like, some competition if he gets a hold of his abilities. And uh, yeah, so th- so that's sort of his thought process i imagine at this point and right so um since he since 
Aizawa, the, the homeroom teacher, was satisfied with. With um, everyone's performance during these tests, he decides to not send anyone home. Um, right, so, so that's good. And behind the school, him and All Might sort of had this conversation. And Aizawa was actually thinking about sending a student home because in a previous year, he sent a full classroom home. Hmm. So he's a really strict teacher. Kind of makes me think of uh, Kakashi from Naruto, uh, if anyone sort of uh, knows that character. Because Isn't he like the trainer of Naruto and he's got this like eye patch? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, actually, yeah, because they both use their eyes. for They have uh... eye abilities. And when we first meet them, uh, Kakashi was talking about uh, sending uh, everyone home, um, expelling them if they failed. It makes me wonder like what Japanese schools are like. You know, like, you suck, go home. Yeah, they're, they're pretty strict. Hmm. Yeah. It's either Japan or South Korea. I think okay. maybe, maybe even China where, where it's like the, the, the suicide rate is like really high you're just like really stressed and they have lots of um, um, uh, responsibility stuff hmm. yep it, it, it reflects in anime yeah I guess anime you know if you know the suicide rate is so high they would sort of need anime and, and video games to sort of rest their mind you know, put their mind at, at ease yeah. at, at some point like I can't even imagine like I didn't like school but I can't even imagine what it would have been like had it been more strict yeah they've they've they have, they have stuff like cram school and uh, where it's like I don't know what that is actually but but like <laughs> but it, 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 it it's cram, right? So, so they of, cram of, it. Yeah, so you've heard of cramming, right? So yeah. I guess just like a, a like a, another form of uh, education for for studying tests. Um, all this talk about like tests and stuff, and and oh no, no, <laughs> and uh, this this anime um, and going forward, which you'll you'll come to find out, but it reminds me a lot of, of a show called Assassination Classroom. Mm-hmm. Have you heard Have you heard about that? Yeah, I've heard of it. I've never seen it. Oh. Yeah, it's it's pretty similar to that. It's got some similarities to that, and um, uh, definitely go go uh, watch that, read that. It's uh, it's kind of underrated, I think. I don't really hear many people talking about it. I uh, happened to uh, see like the live action movie version um, when I was on a plane, and, <laughs> and I and I really liked it, so I went to watch the anime. Definitely worth a check. Assassination Classroom, or ass or ass class for short. Um. <laughs> ass class. Okay. Anyway, um, so uh, Deku Deku is the name Bakugo gave Midoriya um, to belittle him, like it was sort of like a. a a bad nerd name to call him like a pet name like um i guess like uh, like like a nerd or, a, or like a like a doofus or something okay okay worthless yeah and after talking with the girl uharaka um she kind of thought the name was cute so midoriya took a liking to it after a- afterwards and we come to uh learn of a new hero uh faculty member um the cooking hero lunch rush yeah <laughs> I bet he makes really great food. Like, hmm, that's probably a really useful ability to feed people. Or... I feel like that would be the most useful. Like, he's, like, downplaying his ability by serving in a lunch. Yeah, yeah like, uh, you would have met, well, so this this um, high school it sort of acts like a college, really, mm-hmm. I think, because the, as you'll come to find out, the teachers still have, like, jobs outside of their, their teaching duties, similar to, um, to a lot of college pro- professors and stuff. Like, they have their own thing. Mm-hmm. So I imagine, like, he does have his own restaurant and you know he does go around fixing food and stuff but you know he's just here like Part on the weekdays or something yeah service. all right so the students get their costumes get some costume um yeah, so we have Ida, um, who I kind of think that that his costume it looks sort of cumbersome, like since he's speed and stuff. Yeah, his, it looks like armor, so it looks slow, right? I think not aerodynamic. Right. So that's. I mean, it it looks cool, but I'm not sure how practical that is. I think that Medoria's remind me of like a Digimon. <laughs> yeah, I, I can. That was yeah. With the like the little ear thing, I guess. Yeah, he looked like a little Digimon. And I kind of think it looks silly, you know. I don't know something about like the eyes look too cartoony i guess I, he's a very cartoony little kid but that's the thing though he's like he's just a kid so maybe that's why but once he gets to be like a buffer maybe he'll upgrade yeah i think that's also a good point because he modeled he he modeled his suit after all might <laughs> and uh you know with the hair and the smile in the suit so i think once he uh, sort of uh comes into his own he'll make his own suit uh, to reflect his own journey as a hero i don't know if he'll keep deku either then hmm, i don't know uh, we also have Bakugo's costume. I think it mostly looks pretty, pretty cool. But like something about the grenades on his arm, it would seem uncomfortable to walk with your hand at your side. You know, you have to walk sort of outward a little bit. They kind of look like cannons a little bit, like grenade cannons, but. 
It seems, like, too obvious. You know what I mean? Like, some of their costumes are just like, oh, well, this is your quirk. This is definitely what your costume's gonna look like. Like, Spider-Man, I think about Spider-Man, right? Like, Spider-Man, his costume doesn't have a cape. Has webs. But it's, like, super aerodynamic. Right, well, If it wasn't for, like, the detail of it, it wouldn't be, wouldn't, it wouldn't look like anything. It would just be red and blue. Um, well, for his case, it's good that he doesn't have a cape because that creates wind resistance. Mm. Um, but... But, you know, some versions of Spider-Man, he has, like, the webbing underneath his arm. Oh, yeah, for gliding and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. But but speaking of, if, you know, what I just said about wind resistant, like, Superman shouldn't have one. No. That's not a good idea. Batman shouldn't have a cape. Well, that that, that sort of helps him glide and, like, protects him from, like, stuff. So I, I think that's okay. That's okay. Oh, because he uses it as a shield. But, like, I say, okay, so Superman. But, okay, okay, argument. If Superman has a cape, it's only for aesthetic. Yep. Because no matter the wind resistance, still through it. Yeah. But if the Incredibles t- taught you anything, is to <laughs> not wear capes. Speaking of Incredible, coming out soon. Yep. June, June, like mid June. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to be talking about that, so stay tuned. Um, yeah, capes, uh, not not a great idea. I don't think any of these characters had uh, capes. No, it was just like the weird, like, clunky details they had on them. Yeah, most of them were pretty cool. Um, some of them were kind of flamboyant, like the naval laser guy. But, but he's a flamboyant, colorful character, so, I, so maybe that's okay. And what do you have here? What do you have? So, uh, Aizawa is pitting these students against each other in uh, hero versus villain scenarios. And it's a two on two. So, we have uh, first up Midoriya and Uraraka against Bakugo and Ida. And so the uh, match starts, and Midoriya and Bakugo are in a little scuffle. And this is when uh, Midoriya embraces the name Deku, and he sees it as like a hero name. And um, Bakugo is pissed off, and that's where we kind of leave, off. leave off on that. Yeah. One. Um, yeah, we're sort of ramping up into some interesting things, some conflicts. Um, really looking forward to these next few episodes. Thought. Uh, yeah. I mean, I am kind of sad that we're only doing three episodes at a time. I wish we could just do, like, <laughs> the entire series as one big clumpy mess. Because it's, it's hard to do three episodes. Because there's so, I, I almost want to say, like, so little story, like, that evolves in that amount of time. You know what I mean? So... So little story that what do you mean? Like it's it's more about character building in the in this this series. So um you know watching it you you'll you'll be easily entertained. But like when it comes to kind of reviewing it, there's not much story that like kind of builds on top of it. We're just kind of going from point A to point B point C. I don't know. Right. Well, the okay. So season one is like either either twelve or thirteen episodes. So that I think those episodes are best watched uh, in close proximity. Because they that is sort of like one long story, but after that, um, there's a lot more quick movements and a lot more uh, things happening. Um, but um, the reason why I don't think we should watch more at this point in time, because I kind of want to wait until epi- uh, season three um, has more episodes to come out, so we're not you know waiting uh, 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 relentlessly for the next episode, you know, week by week. But um, so we're gonna have to figure out what we want to really discuss about this. Cause there maybe there's sh- maybe there's like more to it that I'm just not I'm not seeing. I mean I love it. More to it than you're not seeing when you. Yeah, like maybe we should do something fun with it, like invite cosplayers. That <laughs> invite co- cosplayers yeah. to like talk about it. Yeah. But this is a podcast. They, they won't <laughs> they won't be able to see the, the the outfit. Fair enough. I mean, would we be getting people that have already seen the, the show? Yes. So you would be the the only one in the dark, really. <laughs> And I'm afraid of like loose lip people like spelling things. Like I, I think I'm doing a pretty good job of avoiding uh, of some not, major yeah because information. Yeah, a lot of the revelations seem to happen next season. So, um, right. So, uh, so we. So this is the sixth ep- um, episode that we just finished, and in another two weeks we'll finish season one basically. Mm-hmm. That's not actually too bad. So we'll get right into season two okay. pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah. Well, I look forward to it. And I think that's it for the My Hero Academia MSG podcast, episodes four, five, and six. Thanks for listening. Yeah. And if there's anything, any anime that you guys want to recommend to us, uh, maybe something that we should 
do for our YouTube channel because we're kind of debating about whether or not we should do dailies instead of weeklies. He provides some more content to our page. Mm-hmm. I think it's a lot better. So for those of you who do listen, thank you. Let us know in the comments what you think we should do for our channel. Yep. Um. Right. So uh, should we should we like have like a poll on uh, on Patreon because like Patreon does have like like you know you can make a free poll f- for people and um, have people write some suggestions down there and if you know whatever the the most get within the next like I don't know month two months so okay we, we may pick that one up. All right, so we'll we'll create a poll um, based on, you know, what kind of content we should add to our channel. Keep in mind, we're artists, we're animators and podcasters. Um, so, yeah, we should do something of the like mind. Yep, thanks for listening.